Hello everyone, my name is Phoenix. I'm the legal advisor for Exceed the Bar. We are a company who specialize in legal advisory or providing legal advisory and business psychology services. Uh, one of the services that we offer is to tutor law students and uh, to guide them through the various LLB modules. Um, we groom people for careers in law uh, and we also offer legal recruitment, uh, law recruitment to place candidate legal practitioners, uh, that is, uh, you know, pupils, candidate attorneys, um, in suitable positions. Our content is supplementary and complementary to all university uh, LLB degree modules. The preamble to the Constitution of South Africa lays out uh, several of our country's visions, but amongst these uh, visions is the imperative to free the potential of each and every person in this country. Uh, we recognize the potential of every person and we want every law student in particular to do well in their careers. Uh, to this end, we will seek to sharpen your legal prowess, your knowledge, your skills, and to guide you through your studies to a full uh, in-depth understanding of law. We will also help iron out any problematic subject areas that you may encounter. Uh, our offering includes practical visual skills and things that you may not be taught at law school or university. Our materials are loaded with tips and efficient ways of processing things in law. As part of our post-study services, we endeavor to offer law firms and their principals with best matched uh, students readily chiseled for their articles or pupillage and to place students on a solid footing to a career in law. You can browse our website at www.exceedthebar.com. Uh, our contact details are included at the end of this particular workshop. Thank you for joining us. <clears throat> So, mastering journal articles. Now, this is also vital in law. Um, it is regarded as opinion, but it includes authoritative sources as well. So, articles are generally written by the who's who in law, but anybody really can write an article, com provided you comply with certain technical uh, requirements and uh, content requirements needed for that particular journal but you can actually go ahead and write a whole bunch of journal articles as long as it makes uh, sense juridically as well as contributes to our jurisprudence you're going to be doing very well but in any case you will need to refer to journal articles um, throughout your studies and throughout your profession The question arises how to study the journal articles. Uh, journals are mostly opinion and viewpoints for interest, therefore they are regarded as secondary or persuasive sources. You will find this when we come to our ACING legal research course, we deal with secondary and persuasive courses. There are some examples of popular journals right now in South Africa. Um, and they've got quite an archival history behind them, so they've been around for many years. Um, and they range from liberal to conservative to, you know, uh, but they're all based on academic uh, research. Many articles can be lengthy and laborious to read, but there's a trick to extrapolating their main ideas. So like we had 200 and something plus pages for a judgment, you can easily find an article with 80 to 100 and 100 and something plus pages. You also don't have time for that. Your research question is whatever um, motivates you to have a look at that uh, particular article and you'll generally pick up the keywords from the title itself. It may be for purposes of finding answers for your assignment to support a point that you are making or to broaden your perspective on applying law in a certain field or for your own research and speciality. Um, a lot of firms have uh, journals, in-house journals now. Um, especially your your big five firms in, in South Africa, 
CDH, Clive Devko Hoffmeyer, uh, ENS, Edward Nathan Sonnenberg's Africa, uh, Bowman's, Gil Fillins, Vaxman's, everybody. They've all got a kind of dedicated in-house journal, albeit in the form of a blog, but never nevertheless informative. And you can learn a lot from these because it's cutting edge. It's the latest legal opinion based on the latest legal precedents. So it kind of adds to what you already know in your textbook and study guide. But it's up to you. Use the highlighting scheme for consistency throughout your studies. So apply what you've already been applying to study your textbook, your um, study guide, the highlighting scheme, um, and your abbreviations if you download or print the article you can do the same any case our framework starts with just simply read the headings of that article read the introduction or the abstract uh, read the conclusion of the article and then target what is relevant uh, and extrapolate only what pertains to your research question it is very easy to go down the rabbit hole when you read journal articles because they can be very stimulative and informative and compelling to read the whole thing and by all means flow the author power who wrote it it's great stuff always quote and cite them your references ref uh, re relevantly um, otherwise you'll be guilty of plagiarism uh, so coming to a practical application here's an example of an article that you will most probably encounter in professional ethics or legal ethics when you get to your final year um, and this is quite a uh, controversial article in terms of what it is to become uh, a lawyer or a legal practitioner there's pros and cons in other words so the key is to, to read for relevance. This particular article is like 100 something pages or 80 something pages, but you must pay attention to the sources used in the article. These can add to your reference in research papers and assignments you tackle. You will find that some many articles uh, quote from the key cases in that particular field. Mm. And so it, some may give a different perspective, some may give another angle that you've never thought of before, but go for it. Uh, there's how we cite this using the Oscola method of uh, citation, which is the correct method for using um, law articles at present. Um, we go through the Oscola research method in our Ace Your Legal Skills videos. So, uh, approach all the your journal articles with a question how can this article help me answer a module question apply the reading framework step by step this article gives a table of contents not all articles do so some just get straight into it but most of them generally have a little subheading or heading here and there and that can guide your uh, search for relevance in that article uh, so you hardly need to scroll through all the pages by doing so. In any case, the first paragraph generally lays out the author's hypothesis that the law profession makes many practitioners unhappy but lays out ethical practices to avoid this from happening in this particular article. So it gives you a, a general gist for what the article is about. And it definitely captured your attention, right? Because you would never think that lawyers can be anything bad can happen to lawyers I mean just think of suits right they don't get sick they don't uh, battle with life's problems and yet that is so far from the truth any case the author here Schultz has spelled out in the headings his reasons for making his assumptions and you can see the lawyers poor health he puts down depression anxiety alcoholism drug abuse divorce suicide physical health and general lawyers unhappiness and so you can automatically start asking how can he make these statements and when you go through the article you're going to find he's actually got scientific um, research that has been done on it and so it's very eye-opening so read what interests you from here um, in fact you can generally get a grasp of his thesis by simply reading the first sentence of each paragraph if you must a simple five to ten minutes you can know what this article is about and how it can help you next please 
Okay, articles aside, we come now to the study of news. And there you can see our online news platforms. We've got several, News24, Daily Maverick, Times Live, IRL, etc. How do we study this? Well, the key is you don't study it. Just stay in the loop. It's vital that you stay current with happenings in the world, especially if you're doing things like international law, company law, uh, intellectual properties, etc., cyber law. You, legal studies discourage citing news media. When a case is before court, court will not pander to public opinion. That is a general um, rule that court follow. And so it will make up its own mind free of public opinion. But does public opinion not play a role? Of course it does. You're human. Uh, your clients are human. Um, some simply make decisions based on what is there in the news media and in the social media even worse. Then you've got fake news. So be careful of news. Um, staying abreast of it, it keeps you in the loop so as to what legal challenges may be brought. And it's also a quick way of being informed of the latest cases in case law development. Uh, Daily Maverick uh, highlight uh, a number of key cases. For example, the recent spate we've had uh, cases about Cyril, Jacob Zuma, um, the public protector. And so the various cases as they unfold, there's a lot of commentary. Very interesting. But take it tongue in cheek with a pinch of salt. Just remember that news agencies are gatekeepers of info. They have their own political agendas. And so they color their news through the editor editorial lenses. And uh, it in turn draws impartiality and anti-bias into question. So use news at your own peril in legal matters. And if you do, quote the source correctly. It's not to say that news does not find its way into legal arguments. Uh, it may form a basis for what the reasonable man uh, perceives or something like that. And so this is, this is all challenged through news. But stay in the loop. When it comes to visiting websites, I would just recommend download relevant material. Don't waste your time. Websites can be very, very fascinating, especially our uh, law websites. This one is from the Pretoria Society of Advocates. It's aesthetically appealing. There's a hell of a lot of information in it, useful links, etc. Um, everything is going digital. So society is migrating onto paperless digital platforms where digital technologies are the future. So get with the program. Very simple. Nothing wrong with visiting websites just because you've uh, got extra information at your fingertips. So it doesn't matter what website you visit, always be learning and collecting information. As we said in the first uh, video, keep an open mind. Um, as a lawyer, you must also be on top of your knowledge at all times. Obviously, knowledge is the administration of, uh, well, study is the administration of knowledge. Um, law websites are manifestations of law in practice. You can learn a hell of a lot from this. Even your competitor websites, uh, big firms, as I said, ENS, CDH, um, uh, there's many. Um, you can orientate yourself to how things run in law, their processes, structures, admin, expertise, etc. When you find key info relating to your particular subjects, such as articles, uh, click on the file at the top of your browser and select export to PDF or print and print to PDF. You understand? So save it so that you can refer to it offline or in the future um, so that you can continue browsing without wasting time and just collect info needed when you that you can read later. And then, of course, once you've uh, downloaded that, um, uh, of course, if you're going to use it in uh, as a source, you must reference it correctly. Otherwise, it's plagiarism. And you must only use it for academic research purposes or personal purposes. Don't now go and make it as if you've said whatever is in that article. That's also plagiarism, right? And then lastly, file your PDFs appropriately by renaming them. I usually just save a lot of time by put, 
renaming that file according to how I would cite it in a bibliography. Um, if you click on the file that you saved or downloaded, the properties tab usually contains the URL that you used to access it, which you have to support for your reference. So when you come to doing your assignments and you've got websites visited, you've already got the URL. When you read what you download, use the same color coding highlight uh, scheme and abbreviation scheme to extrapolate the relevant data. Strike a balance between relevance and info overload. Don't waste time processing unnecessary stuff while you're doing your degree. Don't go down the rabbit hole, guys. How to study videos, webinars, and podcasts. Well, the key there is not to study, it's simply to participate. Right, remember, you're not an island on your own. You don't know it all. And you might even be wrong in what you know. So peers, they call it peer review in law. Uh, peers can actually set you on the right track and correct you. So even in these um, videos that I'm making, if you think I'm wrong or you disagree with something, hey, by all means, approach Baba Phoenix and tell me. Uh, you disagree with one, two, three. You think one, two, three should change. You think I've got something wrong. Whatever, guys. I'm human. I'm open to be corrected. So don't get stuck in the books. Engage with your fellow students, lecturers, legal experts on the subject. Sometimes watching and listening from others in action will help sharpen your knowledge and your legal skills. Well, not sometimes, always. Now and then I usually go sit in court just in the gallery and just observe, you know, is the judge paying attention? How are the arguments unfolding between counsel? Uh, how are uh, witnesses being um, uh, examined and cross-examined? And I, I constantly sharpen my skills. So there you will see I've put up a little uh, screenshot from my own YouTube channel and you can see there's a couple of playlists that I've made there. So these are your video tips. I recommend firmly to create your own YouTube channel. You don't necessarily have to post content, but at the same time you can use that channel to create your own law library online if you like or your reference library online so create playlists for modules where you need more info there you will see i've got um, stuff for uh, criminal justice cyber law uh, cyber terrorism constitutional law, law commercial law company law etc and then whenever you watch a video that is relevant to that particular subject just save it to that playlist and you can continuously add to your playlist so you've got it for future. Um, subscribe to authorities in your field, especially lawyers, lecturers, law firms, organizations. Please, by all means, go there. PwC, uh, well, the legal side anyway. Um, uh, Bowman's, ENS. Uh, there are so many guys. You can just go and get the popular uh, law firms and just go subscribe to them all. Um, save the relevant videos to your playlist. Watch them in 2x speed to get through them quickly. Believe me, that helps. And believe me, you will pay attention when somebody's talking slightly faster simply because you're compelled to pay attention. Otherwise, you're going to miss what they're saying. Um, and it also saves time. So like with me, maybe I'm speaking a bit slow. You can just 2x me and I'll speak like a chipmunk and you can <laughs> get all the info very quickly. Of course, make notes, take screenshots for future reference, but learn and have fun. Um, coming to podcasts, these are the, the, the same tips apply as for video, but the difference is you're collecting relevant podcasts, not videos. Uh, so the big law firms... Um, Norton Rose Fulbright, they all have very active multimedia channels. So just connect, save and play. Um, then webinar tips, uh, get your profile up and running on LinkedIn. Guys, this is super important. LinkedIn is a powerful platform to connect. I don't think I have to explain to you why and how social media works, but especially LinkedIn, there are more and more legal practitioners getting online, ranging from judges right down to uh, students such as yourselves. Don't be shy to say you're a student. It's not a crime. Don't think that 
uh, Mr. All and Mighty will not connect with you just because you're a student. He's going to look down his nose and say, oh, what does he know? Uh, connect to relevant law groups, firms, and authorities in your field. And very frequently, they advertise free webinars for this and that. So join the, uh, uh, the webinars and uh, let them take you through their presentations. You will learn phenomenal things, especially when there are presentations um, involving ju different jurisdictions around the world. Because, you know, our law uh, platform and jurisdiction basis is, is narrowing the more we, in, excuse me, interact um, on a digital platform. So make notes, take screenshots, just remember to quote them if, if ever you refer to them. That was it. A very short and simple uh, way of approaching secondary sources. Here are our contacts. Please do contact us. We'd love to help you get through your law and set you on the right path in your career. There are the courses that um, we have at our disposal at the moment. Please visit our website, sign up, and of course, do your free booster courses. These will only serve you uh, in good stead, both now and in, the, in your future career. Thank you, and please watch the next video.